Hey, Mark Milan here. Thank you for letting me be a part of your day. Today I want to talk about three things I do to study God's Word, to study the Bible. And I'll give you a couple of uh, things for me. When I was growing up and I got saved, I got saved when I was 13 years old, and my parents had a King James Version Bible that was English and Spanish. It was a big old book. I mean, that thing was like this. I had the hardest time reading it and understanding it, obviously, because who speaks Shakespearean, right, anymore? So it was very difficult to read passages of scripture to understand their meaning based on the language. The language was a barrier. So for me, uh, I was unaware of translations. Nowadays, through the Bible app, you have access to all sorts of translations. But there are differences. There are some translations that are more about the meaning of what's being said, and there are some that are more literal to the language. The Bible split up to in, in Hebrew, in the original language of the Old Testament, and then the New Testament scriptures are in Greek. And so when all the scrolls and scriptures were translated into one book, then that had to get translated uh, for us in English. So the meanings can vary. For example, a word like love, we have one word for it, but there's different meanings in the Bible's use of the word love. So just to give you some context, I wanna give you three things I do when I'm studying God's word. So here's three tips in how to study God's word. Number one, read slow. Number one, read slow. Uh, when you're reading a chapter in the Old Testament, keep in mind a couple of things. The Old Testament is a forecasting of things that would be to come. Not only is it historical, it's, it's also just, there's a lot of spiritual content there that hasn't been revealed because Jesus hadn't come yet. So when you're reading a chapter, for example, there might be a section in the chapter that it, you know it's only this portion and then another storyline starts here i would encourage you to just stay there that day or make that part of your reading that day and study it and try to unpack it uh, when you're reading the new testament uh, i would say the same thing especially if you're reading through the gospels uh, you're seeing little pictures of three years of life through jesus's ministry and so you could read a couple of verses and then these other verses that didn't happen the same day or maybe they happen later on the day, but they're all in one chapter and it can be, you can lose context. So I would say read slowly through your chapters. That's number one. Number two, I would say take advantage of commentaries. There's a whole bunch of biblical commentaries online that you could access through your phone. The benefit of the commentaries is that the people who have written them, Matthew Henry, to, to name a few of them, they have the original language of the scrolls, they have the original language of the scriptures, um, they have degrees in studying historical context of culture at the time, understanding the perspective of the authors. And so when they start to break down one verse, they're going to give you a broader understanding of what that one verse might mean or what those words might mean. Again, because we're living in a different era than when this was written. So we're trying to get the meaning to be able to absorb the impact of what God's word says, but the commentary can help you quite a bit. And then the third thing I would say is remember why it was written. The Bible was written to introduce us to Jesus and so Jesus himself, when he was walking and talking with his disciples and the Pharisees, they were studying God's word and he was pretty much calling them out saying, you're missing the point. The scriptures were written to point to me, is what he said. So all of God's word is a story about God's plan for salvation. From the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, it's God's plan for salvation through the revelation of the person of Jesus Christ. So, all of the Old Testament, the prophets, the minor prophets, the major prophets, the law, the book of Moses, okay, the Psalms, the Proverbs, then you have the New Testament, is all given to us to understand God's plan for salvation through Jesus Christ. Our need for salvation 
through Jesus Christ. There's things in the Bible you're not gonna find. And so, for example, do they talk about credit cards? No, they don't. Do they talk about airplanes? No, they don't. But I've flown on an airplane and I have a couple of credit cards in my wallet. So what does that tell you? You're not gonna find all the answers you want from life in the Bible. It's not intended to give you that. The Bible is written so that we could understand God's plan for salvation through the person of Jesus Christ. So that's very, very important as you're reading it to keep the perspective of where is God revealing Jesus to me in this chapter? How can I understand and learn about God's plan for salvation for me through this chapter, through what I'm reading? That's gonna be the premise almost all the time. It's weaved in all of the books, right? 66 books, more than 40 authors over 1400 years spanning the time from the first book to the last book. So uh, it's weaved throughout here for us to understand and learn and draw closer to God. The whole purpose of reading God's word is to understand who he is and what he's given to us in Christ Jesus. So I'll summarize, number one, make sure you read slow so that you can gain understanding and really be able to meditate and absorb what it is. Number two, as you come across things that are a little bit difficult to understand, I would encourage you to hop online and find some Bible commentaries. They're extremely helpful. They've helped me really unpack what God's Word says. And then number three, remember why it's written. It's to understand who God is through the person of Jesus and His plan for salvation for us. So those are three ways that have helped me understand God's Word. I hope they encourage you as you grow in God's Word as well. Until next time.